Okay, my name is Graham Potter and uh, today we're going to be talking to you about uh, carving. Uh, the tree next to me is uh, an English hornbeam, Carpinus, uh, which is collected two years and now is the time to begin to start to do some work. Uh, we're obviously not going to style this tree but what we want to do is show you the carving process that we have to go through uh, to begin to remove some of the problems in the tree. Uh, it's obviously been cut down from a much larger uh, a much larger tree in the wild and we want to reduce the tree in height at the moment he's nearly 1.5 meters tall uh, we want to reduce that to just under a meter so when the canopy of the tree is grown he will be about a meter tall uh, there are several large cuts on the tree chainsaw cuts where it was reduced from its original size and uh, so what we're going to do is walk you through the process that i like to use to begin to create uh, bonsai from this material before we get started on this tree i'd like to show you some of the tools i'm going to be using uh, because this is such a big tree, um, because of the type of wood it is, it would be possible to do it with hand tools, but to be honest, uh, it's going to take an age. So we're going to be using power tools, uh, and the trusty Makita is a high-speed die grinder, which is going to be uh, the motive power, and the main two cutting bits I'm going to be using is a terrier, uh, which is a, a, a rotary cutter, obviously, tungsten teeth, and also this, which is a weasel, which will come into play later on, to start to produce some nice uh, small detail effects. But with, using the terrier we'll be able to remove large bulks of wood very very quickly uh, and start to make significant inroads to improving this tree. This type of tree requires a different approach to what you would use on high mountain trees such as pines and junipers uh, and is ideally suited to carving with power tools. So the significant thing is to consider what will be left behind after the wood has gone and it's perhaps a little bit difficult initially to visualize what uh, what will happen as the large chunks of wood are removed. Uh, one of the things that's very useful before you start work on a tree like this uh, is to go and have a look at trees in the wild with natural areas of, uh, of dead wood where they've been broken and damaged and how the tree has responded to that damage. And if you can have a look at those sorts of trees it will give you some very good ideas as to what to do uh, in a situation like this. So for now, I want to focus our attention on this piece, and as you can see, it's a very large cut, very smooth, very straight, very uninteresting, but behind this is a little bit of a curve. So once we, you can see from here to here, it's, there's no taper in the tree, it actually gets wider. So once we've carved this and removed this, you will see the taper improve. Now you can see the big stump has gone, but that obviously has left us with a big flat scar. So the next thing is to start to uh, improve the look of this by basically hollowing down into the tree. I've made a little bit of progress. Uh, I've done a little bit of detail work on here, but not too much. Because the wood's green, uh, it's going to need time to season before it will really take some detail carving. So all I've done is rough this part uh, and done really block carving with it. And we just put a little bit of stain on it to give it a little bit of shadow. So you see how it looks. We've decided to remove this part here but now we come to the real large part of the tree that we need to deal with and if we select this as a front you can see the taper of the tree is fairly good. So if I begin to turn the tree you can see here this massive chainsaw cut. There's a big old branch stub at the back here that we probably don't need. And from 
this angle particularly, you can see just how large that cut is. So I'm going to have to start to work on this. halfway through it, I'm officially wearing the tree, uh, but uh, you can see we've removed a lot, there's less and less branches on the tree, but you can see here the, chains, the chainsaw cut at the back, it's about halfway finished, I actually managed to make uh, what appears to be an old dead branch stub at the back and we're just beginning to uh, hollow that through. So here we are with a finished tree. Uh, we've uh, finished all the carving work and uh, removed all the parts of the tree that we didn't need. Uh, obviously from the, where we started we've ended up with a lot less foliage but we've managed to remove a lot of the problems in the tree. Ultimately at this stage in the game we're just left with the trunk but you can see the taper of the trunk has improved dramatically and all the big cuts are all gone. When I do work like this, uh, for a start I just like to do what I would term a block carving. So we remove large areas of wood, but in terms of the hollowing we only go in just a small amount. Uh, this gives the tree time a chance to settle down and readjust, and then when it's done that, maybe in a year's time, we can go in and then we can start to do some more and uh, we can start to build the tree and improve the quality of the carving. But uh, for the sake of this demonstration, what we've done here is basically just removed the problems of the tree and done the block carving so that you can see how the basic process begins. Just in case you thought we'd been a bit severe with the last tree, I thought I'd show you this, which is again English hornbeam, exactly the same species as the tree we were carving. Uh, this tree underwent the same treatment about seven years ago, uh, and at that point it was in about the same condition as the one we showed you earlier. All of the branches have been grown out from the trunk, uh, and as you can see, the tree has developed very nicely. Uh, so we just wanted to show you this tree to show you how.